Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in On One Photo Raw 2022 and I'm taking a closer look at the line masking tool. It's really cool. Uh, it's powerful. It's new in this version and uh, I'm really happy to have it. And although the name implies it's a straight line tool, you can actually move the lines around and create curves and things like that curved lines, I should say, not to be confused with a curves tool. Um, but yeah, you can curve the lines and things like that. I'm going to walk through a demo. Here's a photo, and I've done some basic edits here in the Develop tab. I'm going to go straight over to Effects, show you how this works. I'm going to click on Add Filter. I'm going to get HDR Look, and just for fun, I'm going to really crank it up so that it's more visible. However, I don't want it applying to the whole photo. So I'm going to invert the mask and hide it. And then I'm going to come over here, and this, uh, if you haven't, if you're not in the masking menu, click M to get into masking, or just click mask on that left menu. But this uh, tool right here is a line mask, and you click on that, and you're ready to go. So um, what it's done now, again, I inverted the mask, so nothing's showing, and what I'm going to do is create my shapes and then paint them in. So first thing you got to do, create a shape. So what you do is you just take uh, your mouse, and this is my mouse cursor. I'm just going to click there. And then as you move your mouse, it starts drawing a line, and then you just click again in the next place you want that line to stop, which would be there. And then you just keep going, and all you're doing is making a shape by clicking, right? So I'm going to click there, and I'm going to move my mouse over here. I'm going to click it there, and I'm going to move it back up here. And now I've completed the shape. And now that I've completed the shape, you'll see that there's a little paint bucket it's a minus, which means paint out. I don't want that. I want to paint it in because remember, I inverted the mask so everything's hidden. Hidden. Uh, that's hard to say, hidden. Anyway, you can't see it. So I'm going to click paint in, and now you can see it's a plus in my bucket. And I just click once inside the masking shape that I've made, and you can see that that HDR look has popped onto the door. Now, again, it's kind of over the top. Uh, this is not, you know, how Jim would make this photo beautiful. This is just a, an example of how it works. So you can do that and then you've got this shape and you'll notice that there's, uh, if you hover over the line between any two points, this little circle shows up. To clarify, each of those points that you drop is a square, right? And then there's a circle uh, and that circle resides in between any of the two lines. So you see there's a circle here, there's a circle over there, and there'll be a circle down here. You can grab any of those circles and you can just move it. And that's how you get into these curved shapes. I don't better to do it this way. You can see it better. So you can see how it doesn't have to be a straight line mask. It's a line mask. It can be a curved line, not just a straight line. So keep that in mind. I'm going to put it back where, uh, where it was simply because in this case, a straight line is best for me. Now you've got feathering and opacity up here, so I can reduce opacity if I want to. And as I do that, you'll see the effect is going away or I can increase opacity. And then feathering is just going to soften the edges. But you can click done when you're ready to go. And if you want to go view your mask, there it is. There's, you know, four straight lines. I made a rectangle, which basically follows the shape of the door. But you know what? I kind of want to go back and fix some things. I kind of re uh, need to re-edit that so you can go back and re-edit these. So I clicked view to hide the mask. I'm back over here. But hey, where's my stuff? Well, I got to hit M to get back into masking. And I got to click on the icon for the line mask tool. And now when I hover over the shape that I made, you can see that I've got my stuff here. So what I can do is I can just click like any of these points and then I've reactivated or sort of turned back on those points so that I can see them. And so what I noticed is this corner up here needs a little bit uh, more, uh, more work. But if I go like that, I end up getting all that off kind of center. So what you can do is you can click shift and then hold down on the line and put another point and you drop another square point. So the square points are basically where you're telling the line, all right, I'm gonna break you from being perfectly straight and you can adjust it accordingly. So I've dropped that and now again, you see that, that little circle between these two squares, right? So I can come up here now and I can pull that one out a little bit because it's a little bit crooked like that. And now I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna pull this up and I'm gonna pull that center line up because I wanna get all of that. That looks like it's gonna fit a little bit better for me. So you can go add those points uh, by uh, shifting and clicking on the line, and then that gives you the ability to, uh, that's how you drop another point, basically. So I could drop multiple points if my line was kinda straight, but not perfectly straight. And of course, be between each of those square points, you have that little circle, which allows you to further refine the shape. In other words, 
allows you to curve it. And so I'm actually going to come in and do a couple of more things here. I think this needs to come over a little bit. I think that looks a little bit better. I'm actually going to drag this corner down because I want to get more of that stonework. And same here. But I think right there I need to drop another point and I need to pull this over here a little bit. So you can see how I'm adjusting the shape. Now I think I've got it. That shape is fine. And so once again, if I hit done and show you the view, you can see my little corner there is uh, sticking out a little bit and same with that corner. That just looks better to me. It feels like a better fit, but I'm not done. You can also add multiple line masks on the same uh, instance of the tool. So I've got that one there, which you've seen. Now I'm going to put one over here over this window and just do the same thing, which is stick some HDR look inside that window. And again, I don't know that this is necessarily what I would do to this image, but it's what I'm doing in this example. So I made my rectangle. I made sure I was in paint in mode and I clicked in the center and now I got this line. I'm going to pull that up a little bit because it needs to curve. I'm going to scoot that over because it doesn't look perfect. And I'm going to scoot that over and down and that over and down. And, you know, once again, I think I'm in pretty good shape. So if I click view, there it is. You can see slightly curved at the top, all that. My mask is fine. I can go back and re-edit at any time. I'm not done though. I'm going to copy that mask. I'm going to use it again here in a minute. And so now I'm going to add tone enhancer. But the first thing I'm going to do, which I like to do, is invert the mask. I'm going to be in the line mask. And all I want to do is create a shape around these brick walls because I want to make an adjustment there. So I'm just kind of quickly doing this. These are not going to be perfectly accurate. It's just uh, demo purposes. And remember to paint in and click. And then I can go add another line mask on the same tool as you know from my last tool demo with HDR look. And I'm coming over here and I'm just clicking around, I'm going around this window. And again, I'm just trying to isolate the brick walls and I'm not doing it perfectly simply because I'm going kind of fast. But there you go, that's done. And so if I show you my mask, there's my mask. I've isolated those brick walls. And all I really want to do, I'm going to close the masking menu, is just darken them a little bit. They're a little too bright for me. I want it to be a little bit moodier, a little bit darker. And so I've just isolated those, um, those walls with the line mask tool. Now keep in mind, I can go back in here and make further adjustments if I need to. Also, as I said before, when you hover over, you can activate those points. And if you need to, you can right click and delete points or delete the entire mask if you'd like to. I don't need to, I'm fine with that. And what I wanna do is get one more tool. Now remember, I copied the mask from HDR look. I didn't use it here, but I am gonna use it on this next tool, which is Glow. And so I'm gonna apply Glow and I'm gonna go ahead and paste the mask. So now it's applying only to the window and door, but I actually want the opposite. I want it to apply everywhere else. So I'm gonna invert that mask and close that and I'm going to choose darker and maybe just change this to overlay and maybe pull that down a little bit. Again, not really a full edit. I don't know that this is what I would do to the photo. I'm just trying to show you how the tool, uh, the line masking tool works. But if you look here, you can see that remember white reveals black conceals. So this glow is not showing in the door or window and it is showing everywhere else, which is what I wanted to do. And again, there it is before and after. And so that's really how I use the line mask tool. Again, curve shapes, straight lines, it doesn't really matter. You can drop a whole lot of different points. If you need to make something that's a little bit more rounded or circular, you can do all that kind of stuff and really customize it to get the most out of it. But very powerful, very useful tool. And I'm having a lot of fun with it. I hope this demo has given you some ideas about how it works. And thanks for watching, my friends. I appreciate it. If you don't have on one uh, 2022 yet, you can get it at the link down below which is an affiliate link. They pay me a referral commission if you use my link. Costs you nothing more. In fact, it saves you a little bit of money with my coupon code, Jim Nix. It's a free way to support all these videos I do. And I'll be back soon with more because it's just fun to talk about. Thanks, my friends. Hope you're doing well. Take care of yourselves and adios.